ahead and go into the second segment, which is going to be about the No Bull Tour, starring yours truly, ex-Chicago Bulls players, and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan isn't a part of this, though. I, I should st- I should make that very clear. Michael Jordan is not a part of this tour um, with um, ex-Bulls uh, players. This is a tour... Um, on the other Chicago Bulls players that were also on the 91, 92, 93, 96, 97, 98 teams that you probably don't really hear about because Michael Jordan. So these players, um, Scottie Pippen, uh, Horace Grant, uh, just uh, Luke Longley, just to name a few, um, those players are in Australia... Um, are in Australia's league, like in Australia's National Basketball League. Scotty Pippen's the president of that league. And they're going on tour to talk about Michael Jordan in Australia because I guess I guess Michael Jordan is still like really, really popular to kids in Australia and like the stories that they tell him is like really popular. So I mean, granted then again, they are pretty popular now, so I don't that's my bad. Pardon me for that. But the tour begins uh tomorrow. February 23rd, but, and the idea of this tour is really not, like, it's in the name, but if you were, if you didn't know, like, what, if you didn't, if you had, don't have a potty mouth like a lot of people do over the internet, then you probably don't know exactly what this tour is about. So, essentially, this tour is going to be about talking trash about MJ. They, 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 there was no sugarcoating it. They were going to really get into, um, they were really going to get into MJ and um, the things that uh, were done via the last dance. Now, what do I mean by the things done via the last dance? Well, the last dance, um, I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure all of you have heard about it before. But if you haven't, it's a documentary on about Michael Jordan and his la- final year on the Chicago Bulls and his entire career as a Chicago Bulls player, the, the entire careers of the rest of the players, all those important things about the, the dynasty Chicago Bulls era. And that documentary was centered around Michael Jordan, obviously, because Michael Jordan was the center of that franchise. However, in that documentary, there were a lot of things that was said and there were a lot of things that were revealed that a lot of the players didn't like. Scottie Pippen was very vocal about these um sort of pro- these uh sort of problems and he's been adamant about them. Like he 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 said numerous times he does not like the documentary of the last dance and he felt that it did a lot of the players dirty because Michael Jordan's never going to admit this or not, but that documentary was made to boost his legacy. And he's not again, he's not going to admit it, but that's essentially what um that's essentially what it was because around the time it was being released, LeBron had already won his fourth title and he was also on the tr- on track to breaking Kareem's total points um total points record. So the argument for Michael Jordan was growing a little slim, so he needed there needed to be a little documentary to be released. And again, just to remind people, this documentary it was kept in a vault. It was like kept locked away until a specific moment. And it's kind of ironic how that moment was when LeBron seemed to be getting a lot closer to MJ than MJ would like. But but I digress and regardless, the things that were being said on the on the last dance, they weren't relatively, they weren't really friendly. Like, they weren't, it, there were a lot of things that were left out in that documentary that I feel shouldn't have been left out. And again, they were left out just because to sort of, like, boost the the legacy of, um, of Michael Jordan and sort of, like, enhance the opinions that people had about him. I mean, there's a whole meme around that um, documentary. It became personal to me. Like, that entire now everybody whenever like they have a whenever they have a great game they always say oh that player took it personally because that's what Michael Jordan like emphasized on that documentary it was like oh he's gonna say this about me oh so that's how you gonna play it all right that's all I needed 
became personal to me. That's Michael. That was Michael Jordan throughout like half that documentary, just constantly saying that. Um, well, constantly bringing up stories about how people and other players like they would do things that would rub him the wrong way, and he would use that as fuel to sort of like give him a boost in playing and like drive his energy for, for lack of a better term that's that was the main theme around that entire last dance documentary and well again like i said a lot of things were overlooked an example that i could that comes right off the top of my head of one of the things that was overlooked is the 1996 series with the orlando magic um th- he doesn't talk about horace grant getting injured in the first game which was arguably the main reason why the Chicago Bulls were able to sweep that year. Because, I mentioned this in the previous podcast, but I'll say it again. At the time they lost to the Orlando Magic in 1995, the Bulls were lacking a a power forward. Then the um, the 1995-96 offseason rolls around, and they get a power forward in Dennis Rodman. So now they have the matchup set for when they go up against Orlando Magic. And then Horace Grant gets injured, and he doesn't talk about that. He talks about it as if he does. He, he barely even like touches the Orlando Magic because he ended up losing to them. But he talks about it as if the Orlando Magic, um, like they were at a hundred percent, and the only thing that Michael Jordan needed to win that series was a good power forward, and boom, he wins. Like. That was the perception that it sort of that he made and it gave off, and it's not entire. It's not like um, it's not a fan favorite uh, to just give off that kind of impression um, to any of your teammates. If it's like oh, he's only giving the credit to himself, he's not giving the credit to anyone else because the Bulls were a fantastic team. They won one less game without him the year that he went to go play baseball. So. That team was a very good team, and they made it to the semi to the Western Conference, Eastern Conference semifinals. Pardon me. And they lost in seven games. So, with that in mind, and and the fact and the fact that like um, like with again with that in mind, it's it's really like it's sort of degrading if you are any of the teammates because it's like wow we put in all that work just for him to take all the credit like really, and. Like, while I do, like, see some truth in some of the statements, like, I do believe that he definitely did take a certain things personally. I think a lot of it um, tended to be a little a little over-exaggerated. In fact, not a little. Greatly over-exaggerated. Especially to the extent where, like, it got Scottie Pippen to be upset. I mean, like, that's his... That was his dynamic duo. He didn't win a championship without Scottie. And it was... And the fact that Scotty like is actively upset about this, and having this no bull tour because he was upset about this speaks a lot, and it just affects it just affects like um sort of a lot of people. I don't really think this affects MJ's legacy honestly. Like I don't know why Pippen is doing this other than the fact that he is upset, but it's not really going to change many people's perspective perception on Michael Jordan. Everybody already knows that he's the best player and that he was he's the best player that the NBA has seen. I personally don't think so, but obviously a lot of casuals still think so. So, he's still iconic and I don't think this would do much unless he says something that's like really really offensive. Like I don't really see this as making much noise. I'm probably going to cover this again in a different podcast if a quote does come up. And it does circulate and it does make a lot of noise. But other than that, like, again, it's sort of, it's, the last dance, it was dramatic. It was, um, it was degrading to a lot of the players. Ooh, one of the things that I, um, I completely forgot to, um, one of the things that I completely forgot to mention, like, about that, um, about that last dance was sort of, um, how, I'm trying to find the right way to word this, how, like, I mean, yeah, he would. I mean, he would skim through a lot of the things in the in the documentary and a lot of important things, like for example, his performances against the Seattle SuperSonics. He um, he barely talked about that series and how he almost blew a three nothing lead 
in the finals. He he never he didn't talk about it because he had really bad numbers in um in that series. But obviously he wasn't going to talk about that series as much as he was going to talk about the other series. And another thing, there was something else. Oh, he also um again like with the perception thing and how he adjusted people's perceptions, he influenced the like perception that Michael Jordan wasn't at 100% um when he was uh, returning to baseball that's sort of the excuse that um a lot of people give MJ for not winning against the magic in 95 and that's an excuse that he gave himself in the documentary but in reality th- that he gave that excuse and he gave the power forward excuse the fact that they were lacking in the power forward but in reality Michael Jordan was always at his peak when when he was in the it didn't matter he was always at his peak I said this in previous podcasts, averaging 31 points per game in the playoffs is prime Michael Jordan. That is peak Michael Jordan, and he did that in the series against the Orlando Magic. So he was completely, he completely like shoved that under the rug, and he shoved a lot of things under the rug, which is why these Bulls players are doing this. And does it affect his legacy to a lot of fans? No. To me, it definitely does. Because why do you have to put down a lot of your teammates to sort of make yourself sound greater. Like, obviously, like, I get, I, I get that narcissistic, I understand that narcissistic mentality because, like it or not, he was the best player and he was going to let you know that he was the best player and he's going to act like he was the best player, rightfully so. I totally understand that. But in terms of, like, when I think of, um, like, who the GOAT is, and a lot of people try to use LeBron's, um, oh, LeBron isn't humble because he thinks he's the GOAT. Yeah, well, MJ isn't humble either. So I personally I personally use that to sort of, like, affect his legacy because it's like they do the exact same thing. They both believe that they're the best players that the league has ever seen. So I sort of use, I sort of use that as, like, an argument for people who believe that MJ is the best player and that LeBron sort of, like, um... He's trying to force that narrative. When in reality, it's not forced because he is the best player. But, oh, my lights are falling. Hold on just one second. But, yeah, that's sort of um, the gist of, like, why these Chicago Bulls players are having this tour in the first place. And um, do do I think it's a good idea? It's interesting. I don't think it's a good idea, though. I'm not a big fan of I'm going on tour to talk trash about someone who isn't even in the room. That is just not, that is not my thing. It's not my personal, like, not something that I would want to do, especially since it's so long ago. Like, who cares? Michael Jordan's not playing basketball anymore. It's not going to, nothing's going to change what happened in those years. And it's like, um, it, what happened, happened. And it's, and it's whatever. It's like, it's like with Isaiah Thomas. Like, Isaiah Thomas, he regrets I'm not shaking hands with Michael Jordan. But in the end, it is what it is. And he lives, he lived with that decision. So, it's, and not only that, but he also gave you six rings. Let, again, the team was great, but he was the main catalyst and the main reason why the team was so great. And he got six titles, the most, arguably the most infamous six titles at the M, um, in NBA history. And this is how they, this is how they go in and treat him. It's similar to how to what J.J. Redick is doing with Doc, actually, um, and how he's just going back at him. And here we go. We got Crucial PG in the chat. Jordan couldn't win without Pippen. Yes, that is abs- you are absolutely right about that. He couldn't win without Pippen, but at the same time, Pippen couldn't win without Jordan. So, and regardless, like, Jordan was the face of that Chicago Bulls team. So it's not like they would have even, like, tried to be good without Michael Jordan. So he was obviously the catalyst, and that's sort of what I meant by him being the catalyst of that of those championships and the fact that he gave them those championships. Because without him, they wouldn't... Okay, I can't really say that they wouldn't be in a position to compete, because with one year without Michael Jordan, they were able to make it pretty far. But at the same time, like again, it's Michael Jordan. Um, Crucial PG says, um, whoa... Crucial PG says, because there's, there's a lot of stuff that he types in the chat, I think it's more of the way they were talked about in The Last Dance 
but yeah, I do agree it should. I mean, that's sort of what I that's sort of what I talked about like throughout this entire segment because like he was um he was saying things that wasn't that was wasn't wasn't all true. Like it wasn't entirely true, but it wasn't entirely false either, if that makes sense. But it was skewed in a way that sort of favored him, which was ob- which was obviously in a way that would piss a lot of um, Chicago Bulls players off because it just made it seem like, oh, all those things that I did, all the workout that I put in and all the the training that I put in with Michael Jordan, like all, you're, he's just throwing that under the rug and he's giving himself the credit. Like, really, wow, what a narcissistic, because that's Jordan, that's Jordan, the narcissist. And there's nothing wrong with that, but should have been uh, crucial PG also thinks that it should have been left in the past and it really should have because like again it would it doesn't affect much it doesn't affect um Pippin's legacy because his legacy is already um he is the Robin to Jordan's Batman so it's not like this um it it, it sort of just feels like it's complaining now at this point and nobody likes nobody likes it when people complain especially grown men who don't play basketball anymore and are already Hall of Famers. Like, what do you have to complain about? But that, but I digress on that topic. So with that, we're, we're out of time with the second segment. So now we are going to go into the third segment where I deep dive into my sadness and I talk about why I think the Nets replaced Jack Vaughn um, mid season and just to just completely ruin my the the Brooklyn Nets season and I'll just see you after this break. I'm really sad. <laughs> 